go, guys, and we shall get ourselves um, straight in and dive through. Hey, North Queensland, Karen. Hey, um, I love North Queensland. I'm heading right to far North Queensland. Um, it's a Cairns in October. We always seem to go to Cairns in October. Love it up there. Um, five staff. Okay, cool. Um, hopefully, hopefully, some of you guys now with your four staff and your five staff, you'll you'll get an idea of where I think your salon should be sitting, where you should, what numbers you should be hitting. We'll hit through that and really how to expand your salon. Uh, there's are going to cover quite a bit today. I'm going to whip through it pretty fast once we get going. We have a minute to go, and. Um, yeah, we're just going to dive in. We'll give you time to answer some questions as we go. It's going to be very, very interactive because I want to know about you guys. This is your seminar. I've done the, the original one. We've had the rerun so you can sit and watch it. This really is to really knuckle down now with you guys and sort of go, okay, I'm stuck on this. I could do help with this. Um, and that's what we're going to aim for as we go along. So I shall see how we go. I've never done it on, on Facebook Live before, but we shall find out. Um, how we go. It is 7 a.m. So, okay, cool. I'm going to talk you through uh, how I got my son onto success. I hate the word success. I really do. But to be truthful, success just means that you've reached that big goal that you want, whatever your goal is in life. Mine was to get a beach house. Of course, most people know that. I wanted to live by the beach. I married really young. I had children really young. I was the main breadwinner, which means as a hairdresser with three children, being by the age of 23, I had to earn some serious money and some serious money fast. So what I did is I got a salon thinking all my um, all my um, problems were going to be over. And I, I knew that I could work most people under the table. I'm a hard worker. I've worked hard all my life. But I got to a stage five years in where it just didn't work anymore. So I had to go searching and find out why it didn't work anymore. So that was my role. That's what I had to do. Um, so for me to do that, um, I had to do something a bit different. So by the way, guys, if you're in here and it starts lapsing or not too good, you're going to have to let me know because I'm going to be whipped through here. OK, these are the few things we're going to be talking about on today as we go through. Um, we're going to talk about the number one problem that every cell owner that prevents you from growing your salon. We're going to talk about the six steps to create an amazing salon that works without you and increases your profits when you're not there. We're going to one simple step to create an account of accountability. The four types of salon owners. We're going to find out who you are. You're going to find out where you are. Hey, hey, Alana, how are you? Uh, you're from South Australia. One part time. Stuff. OK, cool. Um, and of course, the seven step formula to get results in your salon. Um, I am going to be moving fast, fast, fast. I'm going to dive through this. I respect your time. You don't want to hear me waffle about rubbish. You really want me to find out how we can change your salon and how we can get that moving. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to dive in really, really fastly and just try and get this gone as soon as we can with the real good bits that we actually actually need. I'm going to start this off really with some major things that we see here. So we're going to work this through. Eight out of 10 salon owners who start a business fail within the first 18 months. So 80% of you guys will crash and burn. That's just the way it seems to be. It's quite it's quite a, um, a sad statistic, but that's the way it seems to be. 80% of you will not last. And I think the statistic is out of that 20% that goes on, you'll never make a real good living out of it. So we're going to find out what the primary reason is. Number one is you just don't have enough money. Like, I think someone once told me many years ago, hi, Nadine, how are you? Many, many years ago, you need about $30,000 in the air that doesn't exist. It doesn't belong to anybody to try and keep that salon moving along. It's a lot of money to try and find, you know, one bad month and it's going to hurt you badly. You're not in touch with your customers through deep dialogue. You're trying to get a sale too quickly. You're not trying to warm them up. You're not trying to warm this audience. Hey, Sam, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Julie. Glad you joined us through here. Number two reason why people don't make any money in their salons is there's no real differentiation in the market. You are just the same as everyone else. If I Google you and down the road, the price is the same, the pictures are the same, the before and afters are the same. You're just the same. You've got to stand up for what you stand up for. We talk about this is your core story. We'll explain this as we go on through this seminar. A bit weird having a time lapse, but we'll see how we go. Number three, your failure to communicate value propositions. This is really quite strange, this one. This isn't about how much you charge by either being expensive or cheap. You just don't let people know the value that they get with you. 
And that's what you really, really need to know. You need to know what the value you offer people. What do you offer them? It's as simple as that. And this is one of the number four reasons. I'm going to get if you can uh, before it pops up through here. What is number four reason? Do you know what? It's you. It's as simple as that. Like you've got to lead your team. You've got to stand up, draw a line in the sand and go, I don't want this anymore. This is how I do it in my salon. This is how I want my salons to be run. This is how I do it. And that really makes a massive difference. Hey, good morning, Sue. How are you? Good morning, Sue. Uh, number five, inability to nail profitable business model. Do you know, it's simple housekeeping. It's money in, money out, money in, money out. We get so caught up with all the fluff, all the learning, all the plexes, all the expos, and you name it. What tends to happen is, is that we just tend to get stuck. Now, remind me at the end, I've got, I've got some slides here. If you want them, just message me and email me and I will send you the slides at the end. Anyone who just messaged me through, I will pass them on to you. Not a problem. So is this webinar for you? Like we said, we re-ran this before. I'm going to show you how you can grow your salon from 20 to 30, 20 to 70%. And you should. Um, are you open to learning, trying bit different things? Uh, I hope you are. Um, have you ever allowed things to happen in your salon and you're scared to say in case the staff left you? OMG, this is me. Five years I ran my salon. This guy had me on over a barrel. He was fully booked. He was really good. I wouldn't reprimand him. I wouldn't do anything at all because I was scared he would leave me. Anyway, my wife's a lot, lot stronger than I am. And she came in one day and grabbed him by the square of his neck and chucked him out of the salon. I got, I got took to court and yeah, we paid out of court and we got his two weeks money. But you know what? My life was so different. I didn't crash and burn at all. I just didn't crash and burn. I thought I did. I couldn't. My life after that was bliss. So you know what? You've got to realize that if you get money in the bank, you're a different person. Have you ever worried the staff holding you hostage? Hey, you know my hands are high on that one. Hey, good morning, Louisa. How are you? Um, are you sick and tired of being the busiest person in the salon? Do you know what? I got a coach from, from France, um, Beatrice. She smashed me once. She went, you know what? You're the busiest fool in your salon. You're busy, busy, busy. That's what you are. And everyone else is laughing at you in the back room. The staff didn't care if I was busy or not. I actually heard them at the till once say, yeah, Richard will get you in. I was solidly booked. They were doing nothing. You know, it's a fool's game. Um, and do you want more rewards for the hard work you put in? I tell you what I do, and I know there's money out there. I've done a um, a questionnaire on this, and I know that a lot of you guys there are making some serious money, like real money. You know, it's there. It's there for the taking. Uh, your choice is either you take it or you don't. So why listen to me? I've been through it all. I I've wasted a lot of money, a lot of mistakes throughout there. I honed my skills to get my salon pretty much running like a McDonald's salon. And um, we knew exactly how many falls were in a half head. We knew exactly how to run that salon with me and not there. I could guarantee my weekly wage without fail because I literally spent that time. I worked hard once. I did it once and it was fixed and done. So why should you listen to me? I've crashed and burned more times than you guys have. I'm a bit ADTT like that, ADTT. And, and that for me, for example, I, I do that. Like I, I went on a, a mission to find out how I can make money as a salon owner. And I know, and I know some of you on here, it is actually there. Yeah, you know what? Always open to learning, Sam. I totally agree and love change, you know. Um, I think it definitely is the way to go. It has to happen. So your journey so far, guys, um, I want you to, this is your interaction. I want to get you to interact with this quite a bit. So I know you guys are still with me. Um, your journey so far. So um, what's your journey been like? I'll tell you what mine has been like. I was rubbish for five years and really good for the next 15 to 20. That was mine. I did five years of making average money and 15 to 20 to making really good money. Um, what's your journey like? Are you in Struggleville? Are you finding it hard? Come on, guys, I need to know where you are here. I need to know so I can direct uh, my, my talkings and my seminar to you. Um, have you found it hard? Are you finding it hard? Can you not find staff? What's your journey been like? You know, you came bumpy. Yeah, it is bumpy. I mean, they actually call it the roller coaster, ups and downs, ups and downs. I think as hairdressers, we fly on that adrenaline, though, like who loves working on a busy Friday and Saturday and is pumped? We do. But we who wants to sit in the back room waiting for gaps? None of us do. So yeah, struggle, struggle, <laughs> struggleville. Roller coaster. Ride. It is a roller coaster ride. It's up and down. It's up and down. I don't know how I did 15 years. My last 15 years as a salon owner, I worked two days a week and my money never changed. Never changed. 
you know, I knew I was on a 10% increase. I knew I hit 10% regardless if I was on holiday or not. It was really quite strange how that happened, but it took me a long time to do that. Do you know, Kim, it's, I, I, you say spinning plates, I say juggling balls in the air. The problem is you drop, yeah, you drop one and it just feels like, I don't know about you guys, but do you ever feel that you're just there and then someone bloody leaves you and you've got to start all over again? It drives me insane. Um, spinning plates, burn out fires. I know, I know. Um, I've, got a, I've got a question later on. I, I, I might say it now because it really works really well. Yeah, I think, I think that... Um, it's, it's almost like your staff don't like selling Natasha. You know what? It's nothing to do with not like selling. They just don't need to. Like they don't. It's simple as that. Um, some great ways that ordinary stuff. Oh, come on. It is just like that, Sue. It really is. But let me tell you something now. Seriously, if I gave you a million dollars to put in your bank account, one million dollars cash, I reckon tomorrow you'll be a different boss. If money was not involved with you at all, if there was no money involved, you would be different. It means you would you would quite easily you would tell the staff off, you would stick to your guns, it would make all the difference. So when your salon starts making good money, you can make better decisions. It really is quite true. It's amazing how that happens. It all comes down to do that. So some of the guidelines over here, uh, keep an open mind, be ready to make decisions about the future of your salon, your life. That's for some of you if you want to join us later on. Take some notes and have some fun. What's your dream? This is where everything starts. We start here, feel like a fireman. That is so true. You know what? What is your big dream? Because that is what's going to keep you going through them tough times. And it's going to keep you going really when you're putting out fires all that time. You've got to know what your dream is. You'll hear me talk about this over and over again. It really is important. What do you feel, guys, here? What's the hardest part? Yeah, I, Lou, I'll eat on with you. What's the hardest part of owning a salon? What do you think is the hardest part for you to own a salon? What do you struggle with? What's tough? What's, what's really tough? Some people find leadership really tough. They find that, you know, being the leader and telling the, the girls off tough. Some people find the maths part tough. What do you find that's tough? Cash flow. That's a real hard one, that is. Um, Cash flow, Natasha, is really quite hard. Staff, um, working on my business, not in it. Do you know, Kim, one hour a week, that's all you need to start. Just one hour a week and that's, that's it. You'll be fine. And then you build up to two hours a week. Um, getting your team on board. Do you know what? Sometimes it's like banging your head against a wall. Um, definitely leadership. Yeah, I think it's true. I'm going to talk to you about leader, leader later on. And that is the only way to get your team on board, Marina. I'm going to talk about leader, leader. You'll get that answer through there. Okay, here's a strange one. I want you to do this for me now. So don't don't write this in for your head to start with. So get a pen and paper or do it in your head. I want to know, I think Louise has done this already and I think Sam did it. What was your take-home pay last month? So don't tell us. Keep it private if you want to. What was your take-home pay last month? Okay, so we know what that is. What would you love it to be? So you've got, this is what I'm getting. This is what I'd love it to be. And I want to know what the difference is. So tell me what's missing. What's, what's the middle ground? So for example, I used to pay myself about 500 a week. I really wanted 3,000 a week. So my difference was about 2,500. Pretty huge, hey? My job was to get that. Simple as that. So what's your gap? What's your difference? What's the gap that's going on here now? You know, what is your gap? Let me know, guys. How much, would, how much are you missing? How much do you actually, what's the missing gap in here? No one knows what you're getting paid yourself. No one knows what your dream is. The missing gap could be absolutely anything at all. We don't know if you're on 10 grand or 20 grand. 2,000. Okay, cool. So 2,000 a month is what you mean. After tax, laugh out loud. It makes no difference, Sammy. Um, 2,000 a month is what you'd love. I think it's, it's one of these things. Like These are your first goals, guys. At 800 is gap that you're missing. That's a really easy one to get to, Karen. That is 800 a month. That's easy. We could do that one. Or is 800 a week? I'm not too sure. But, you know, think about it. It's, it's, it's not that hard. Um, once you know the gap, you've got to figure out how many people you need to get through the door to, to service that gap. You know, that gap's a percentage. Two and a half. So, yeah, I'm big. I, I like two and a half. I think two and a half is really quite good. 800 a week. Yeah, okay, cool. 800 a week's a biggie. Yeah. Um, Nadine, a thousand a week. You know what? That gap. Yeah, I think that's even achievable. I think that that is. When you think about it, we work on a percentage with our salons uh, and we work out our gaps. Um, it's not that hard to get this sort of money. It really isn't that hard. It just means that you might need a whole new stylist because a stylist here in Australia should be able to get you close to, I reckon, 130, 150 should be their takings for a full timer, which means that out of that, you'll be paying them close to maybe 
40,000, 50,000 wages. Yeah, you're left with 100K to help pay some of your bills. Hey, Kim, 500 a week. Uh, we'd like to take home 500 a week. Wow, that should be easy, Kim. We could do that. That's not too hard to do. I don't think. The one thing, and I spoke to this only the other day, I spoke to someone about this, a salon owner I had a chat with, and this is, um, it's not about doing this anymore. You'll see it on the screen in a second. This is what we all do. It's what I did for years and years and years. I thought that if I worked harder and harder and harder, I'd make more money. I worked seven days a week at one time. When I had my salon the first five years, I did six days working behind the chair. I went in on a Sunday morning for four hours doing marketing and I didn't make any more money. I just made a real busyness busy salon. That's all I did. I didn't make any money at all it's quite sad really that we put we, we just seem to think the more hours we put in the more we're actually going to turn over and it isn't it really isn't i found that if i took time off and spent more time working on the business mastered my numbers and figured out how to get people through the door and charge them more my business soared it just flew I think the people that are doing really well know how to get clients through the door. They don't have an issue with that. They have a very high average bill. And that's why their money really in their back pocket is a lot more than yours. Help is expensive. I know I paid a lot for help is expensive. What I did when I first started this, uh, people came to me. We, we had reps that came in that saw my systems. They started sending people to me. I started helping people. We started getting um, some really serious results with these people. And that's how I grew into my coaching business. That's how it happened. I didn't want to be a coach. It just sort of, I had time to kill. I got a bit bored with the salon. And uh, people approached me and I said, okay, I'll coach you. I'll help you through this if I can. And that's what I did. I helped them through it. And they got the same results as me. And really working on your business made a massive difference. They started doing really quite well with themselves. So what we tried to do from there on was try and break that down so I can help as many people as possible. So it really is when it comes down to it, it's quite simple. You've got to literally just do three things. It really is. You need to try and grow your team, which grows your profits. And it works less. And that's it. Like the more you don't work with your, you know, your head down and your bum up, the more that you actually can look from the outside. I mean, we have um, Sam here, for example, in the group. I speak to her quite regular and the amount of times that she works on her business and the more she works on, the more money she makes. It's very, very easy that way. If we just get stuck in something, um, it's quite amazing how we just forget that we run a business. We get caught up with putting fires out. We get caught up with staff's problems. It's bonkers. i got a test for you now, guys. This is a weird one. Don't have to write this one down, but you can do this one in your head. The, I did this myself once. It was a shock for me. It really was. How much do you think you earn for the hours you work? I worked seven days a week. I think I worked out, I was probably close to 60 to 70 hours I was working. You know, I'd come home in the evening, we'd talk about it, dinner for hours, we'd talk about staff, we'd try and sort out problems. It was absolutely bonkers. The amount of half hours and effort we actually put into the salon, it is different. So I want to know, so I have a good idea here, guys. Where do you think you spend too much of your time? Where do you think you spend? <laughs> Sam, that is so true. It's amazing when you when you take your foot off the gas and because I actually think using your brain does hurt quite a bit. So so guys, um, write down where do you feel you spend too much of your time? Where do you think you waste your time? Because I know I do in the salon. Yeah, I do too. I waste my time when I was in the salon. I would waste my time chatting in the back room, doing clients, just doing crap. And honestly, it's true on the desk. Yeah, sometimes when you think about it, the you know the four-hour work week. We've all read that book; it's fantastic. Facebook aid, Sammy. That could be that could just be like a big black hole sometimes. Reception on the floor. I agree. Like the, the four-hour work week. If I said to you today, you've only got four hours a day, you would get it done. Um, four hours a day, get it done. Handling staff. Yeah, um, yeah. Facebook. I agree totally. Um, and also. Um, where do you think you need to spend more time? So think about it now. Like if you said, right, as from tomorrow, you're not going to work the floor or the chair or the, anywhere else. You're going to do something different. Yeah, wearing too many hats. Where do you think you should be spending time? Where do you think that you would make be more productive? Where do you think that you'd be more productive in your salon? Would you be more productive if you were doing advertising? Um, 
<laughs> hey Karen, that is so true. I've been there, done that, um, have the t-shirt. But you know the one thing, Karen, I made more money. Um, yeah, coaching the team, Marina. Yeah, I made more money, Karen, when I started getting off the floor. I didn't want to give my scissors up at all because I loved what I did. Um, so I couldn't catch up the day wedding party seven. Good, go, good for you. Good for you. Um, uh, on the business at home in the office. Yeah, like think about it. Um, by the way, guys, a little hint here. If you if you don't have time to work on the business, just book one hour, one hour a day or one hour a week and go to the nearest coffee shop and take the stuff with you and get out of the salon. You know, man, people's the phone rings and oh, yeah, she's in the back room. No, you're working, you're busy. Um, yeah, yeah, Sam, yeah, yeah, awesome, yeah, um, yeah, awesome. Uh, writing skins, kind of, yeah, uh, perfect, yeah, 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 um, um, oh, awesome, Kim. Um, right, an online course, good for you. Um, advertising trying to get a senior. Hey, you know what? I agree totally. If you know that you need a senior, you spend your time on that instead of spending your time on crap. It's really is quite amazing when you think about it. But that's what we tend to do. Um, I'm just going to escape through here now. You'll see this, and uh, we'll see how we go. I'm going to I'm going to show show you this. I'm this is a bit weird here, guys. So you should change soon, and then you'll see. What is he doing? But it's really quite him. Yeah. Hey, Melody, how are you? Coaching the team. I agree totally. Um, so, so through here, I'm going to show you something now. Um, if I can do this in black, let's see how we go. Um, it's a little bit of a time lapse through here, so I'll see if I can do it in. Um, okay, we're going to label these so you know who they are. Let me know when they go through. Has he started drawing yet? He has started drawing. Okay, that's cool. So at least we get to see. Um, yeah, just just go to just go to the coffee shop. Um, that's all you have to do. Get out of there and see how we are. So I want to change this to. I want to show you an example. This is this is the four salon owners. There's only four out there. This is really what we have. So we have what I call uh, an IS. So that's the immature salon. So that's in section number one. You'll see that. Um, and I believe number one. Let's go IS so we know who that is. I think IOS is anyone that's between zero. And... Cool. There we go. Okay, cool. So I think that that uh, the immature salon owner, uh, I don't know he's not immature, but the the the, the uh, salon itself is quite um, quite new. They usually sort of start sitting around the zero to two hundred thousand. If you're here in the in the U UK, you can just half this and this will give you an idea of where you are. This is where most of you guys will sit. Okay, and I'm going to call that WZ. That's usually about two to about, I reckon, 450, but we're going to go 400 today and we'll sit it around there. This is, I did a video on this a while ago, guys. This was called the War Zone Salon. This is called the War Zone for a reason. It's where everybody is sitting at the moment. Everybody's here. Every single person that I know gets to this level and takes a foot off the gas. This means the War Zone is if you lose a staff member, it hurts you. Like it hurts you financially, and it actually hurts you as in you've got to put more hours back on the floor. It's as simple as that. So that particular one, section number two, is where most people go to. It really is the hard one. Number three, we call this one. This is where I am going to change everything because this is where I'm aiming to go. It's where I got to. It's where most people get to. I will call that the lifestyle salon. And this goes from anywhere from four to about 900K. What that means is it means if you get your salon to level three, you start can start paying yourself some serious money on level three. If you've got your figures right, this is where you really start earning some real big bucks, which is where you can pay yourself two or three thousand a week and you can feel it. But if you lose a staff member still here, you don't have to go back on the floor necessarily. You can still breathe and you can still live a really good lifestyle. We call it a lifestyle salon for a reason. Some people never get to the next one and they don't want to. I never really had the urge to get to the next one, by the way. I just didn't have that urge in me. And the next one is number four. And you'll see that's an M and a, there you go. We call that a million dollar salon. So that really is, we'll just go one mil. Okay. Once you get to that million dollar, you don't work the floor anymore. You can go and take your unlimited holidays and you could probably lose a fair few staff with it actually hurting you 
like really without it hurting you at all. But anywhere from number three and four is where the money is. If you're stuck in two, and there's a lot of people that get to between 400 and 450,000, so about 8,000 a week. And it means if a staff member leaves, it hurts. But the problem is, is once we get to level number two to the war zone salon, most people start earning themselves a bit of a wage. They're probably on about a thousand a week. And what tends to happen then is they tend to take the foot off the gas and they just sit there on this roller coaster ride. So my aim is to move you all the way around as fast as possible. Now, <clears throat> I think I said this before, there's a game over here we play with my children when they come around. It's called Embers and Scumbags, and it's a card game anyway. Cut a long story short, when you're a scumbag, everybody tries to go all the way around. So it's a bit like you guys trying to go from your number one straight to number three. It's hard to do. It really is. It's hard to get three or four staff members. Now, my son's really good at this card game, and all he tries to do is move two places along, and then two places along, and two places along. And before you know it, he's in the top seat. So what tends to happen here, guys, is that if you're in number one, so Narel, like you said, you're in number one now, your aim minimum just be just to go to number two. That's it. Don't try and go any further than number two. What will it take you to get to between two and four hundred thousand? Do I need an extra staff member? Do I need an extra three hundred clients? What is it that will get you to that next level? You see, the reason you've heard me say quite a few times now that we're closing our membership off, I'm right in the middle of writing a brand new course that's going to get everybody who wants to get there as fast as possible to number four. That's my aim. My aim is to get to number four. Every single one of you, my, I'm going to try and come up with a, a course that is so, um, so micro down that if you want to double your takings in a year, it will happen. My aim is to get you to the million dollar salon. That's my aim. So I need to close it down to rewrite this course. So anybody that's already on my course now will get it no matter what free of charge. So that's my aim. Um, and then, of course, uh, it's going to be more expensive because I want to work with less people to actually get there. My one on ones are different. I'm just talking about my group coaching through now. So our aim, guys, our aim should be let's get a nice um, let's get a red through here. We need to get through here. We need to get from here and we need to get from here. That's what we need to do. For you guys to do that, that's what we need to do. Hey, Sam, I t I'm, I'm hinting, I'm to tell you that my aim is, I'm, I've got this, it's going to be so narrow and so short, and it's going to be bang, 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 you know? How many staff do you need? Okay, Sam, we are working nonstop on getting them clients through the door. Once they're in the door, we're going bang, 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 we're working on someone else. Yeah, I'm pushing. I'm pushing huge. I've been, I've been sitting here thinking it's time to, to really make a difference. I, I, I don't want to... Um, yeah, I don't, I, there's a lot of things in my course. It's a really good course. It's, it'll never be offered again for a reason because I don't want to offer too much fluff. It's going to go like straight in and we're going to be going, right, we're working on this. Let's get this to here. I'm going to show you something now, guys. This is, this is, um, this will be part of the new course, but it's also will help you out here. There you go. Get through there. Okay, cool. Um, it's a bit weird with this, actually. My, I've never done this on this new, new thing before, but we'll see how we go. So you're going to see this here now. I'll, oops, I'll write this through. Let's get the, Let's get my rubber on here first. Oop. Come on now, where are you guys? Um, there you are. There we go. Okay. So you should have seen, okay. So this is how to grow your salon now, how to get people through the door, how to really figure out there's three things that you need to do and you need to do well. So in this category here, oh, let's, get a, let's get a pen, not a rubber, would help. Okay, you need to know your story. OK, so this is your dream, your why. It's why you do it. It's why you actually get out of bed in the morning. You need to know your story. You need to know. My writing is terrible. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but there you go. You should be sad to see that now. There we go. OK, so we need to know that it's coming by that. It's going to fill in. OK, we need to know what your story is. Uh, let's go blue. OK, cool. We need to know what your story is. 
We need to know what your client's problems are and we need to know what your salon culture is all about. And where all the circles interact, there's a sweet spot that's in the middle. And that, if you get that just right, that is what clients come to you. It's as simple as that. This is a fact, guys, and I'm going to tell you exactly how we do this. So when you put your adverts out, so here we go, I'm going to draw this big... Um, so there you go, you stick your Facebook advert out there, and this is what it gets you. This is real stuff. Only 3% will call you. Okay? Only 3% are going to call you no matter what. Okay, cool. So we have got 3% of the people that actually see your advert will actually phone you and call you now. 30% never will call you. They don't like you. They don't like the color of your logo, whatever it may be. They just don't like you. 67% of the people that are out there are watching you right now. Okay, they're actually sitting there watching you. They're watching what you do. They're watching how you react. They're watching what your work's like. That is how you grow your business. So you need to talk to the 67%. You need to know exactly what their problem is. You need to know exactly what your store is about because they want to feel at home with you. They want to leave their salon and come to you. So that's the, so when they do that, when they've left their salon and they come to you, the problem is, is that they want to feel like they're at home. So that's why they're watching you now. They're not ready, but they're checking you out. You know, they're checking. You guys that came and you're part of my group, you checked me out for a while. It didn't just happen overnight. You were watching me, making sure before you give me anything that I'm sound and I've got the same ethos as you and things are right. That is what other people are doing. They're doing it to you now as we speak and your clients are also doing it to other people so make sure you're still there make sure it's with you you need to know it's exactly what you need to know so for me when i do this through here i aim at the 67 percent. it gives me the biggest traction it means that once i actually start moving once i actually start moving my momentum of my <clears throat> my growing of my salon it doesn't slow down should the phone to be moving? It does move in a second, Amanda. It does do that. So what I want to know out of that question, okay, so the thing we've got here, which section do you feel you need to learn more about? So here we go. This is, this is something I'm going to show you now. So we're going to do here, we're going to do sell and teach. <clears throat> You'll see these pop up in a second through here. So sell and teach. What do you feel you need more of? Do you need to be able to teach your staff? Do you need think you need to actually teach? It's quite strange, hey, when you think about it. It's like, what's this guy on about? Teach means building your team culture, you know, building the team up. Do you think you need systems? to make sure that your salon goes really, really, <laughs> that's okay, Amanda, keep me, make sure you keep me on my balls, oh, my balls, um, <laughs> make sure you just keep me on the ball, um, yeah, okay, so sell, teach, systems, what does your salon lack, like you need, you need to be able to sell yourself to everybody that's out there, you need to be able to sell yourself to the new staff that are coming in, you need to have systems to make sure everything is perfect in your salon, you need to be able to teach your team, you need to be able to teach lots of things. Hey, look, hey, hey, Sammy, how are you? Um, yeah. So, um, which one do you think that you're you're short with? Which one do you think the way you think you need to spend some time? Where do you think that you're your weak point? Um, let me know. Um, I have I have um, my weak point through there. Um, used to be teaching my team. Sometimes I, I used to find it really hard getting down to the basic level again. You know, when the level was so. Um, so so big and I loved all the point cutting and everything else. I found it really hard doing the basics with my team. So I used to get someone else doing the basics. Systems, systems are really important. Consistency um, with all of these. Yeah, having that, having that balance really makes a difference. It really does. The thing that I find really quite strange, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on here. Um, my writing is terrible though. 
This is really quite strange. It's a real strange one. I'm going to wait for it pops up. All of them. Yeah, you know what? I agree. And it's really hard. That it will be, there you go. The, the L and the E will come at the end. Um, it really will. For some reason, uh, there is an, an L and an E. I might do it again if it doesn't pop up soon. Let's have a look. There you go. We shall see if we go. There you go. Go through it again. Now, being accountable, you expect, and every salon owner I know expects their team to be accountable to you, accountable to their numbers, and accountable really to the salon. But I don't know many salon owners that are accountable to themselves. And if they're not accountable to themselves, when you say just now you need these three things doing, if you don't do them, you're not even holding yourself accountable. And if you don't hold yourself accountable, but you expect your team to hold themselves accountable, then you're a hypocrite. And you are. I'm the same. I've been the same all my life. I expect my team to be accountable for all their numbers and all their target hitting. And I used to wander around aimlessly saying I'd do something. And really, I'd go home and I'm too knackered to do it. It's quite strange. So, yeah, consistency, Lou, I, I totally agree. But it's true. We need to be accountable for what we do. It has to be that way. There's no other way it can be. Um, somebody has to hold you accountable, guys. If that means you go an accountable buddy, you need to make sure that you get an accountable buddy and do it. Because indirectly, we do need, um, let's see if I'll start here, yeah, awesome. There we go. We do actually need to be hold ourselves accountable. We really do. It is true, it's true. I've, do you know why I believe most of this? Because I do it myself, I'm, I'm, I'm a bad person. Uh, when it comes to that, I expect my team to act a certain way and I don't. You know, I just have enough sometimes and I give up. I don't say I'm going to stick to this continually for a month. I do it for a week and I move them on to something else that's new and shiny. It's dreadful. Um, yeah. Okay, I wanted to, I, explained, I showed this one when I did the summit. So I'm going to whip through this really fastly. I hopefully I won't go too much again. This is in this country. You know, ideally, if you have three staff, you should be sitting there around the 400,000 mark, which is three of you. Really, this way it should be. This way you keep your wages at these percentage, guys. You know, thirty percent wages, ten percent stock. You will have twenty percent profit. I used to sit at thirty-three percent profit. I know other salon owners out there about twenty-seven and thirty percent profit. These are real figures. These are easy to do. This is where you want to be, guys. You want to get to that next level, that lifestyle salon. This is it. Get yourself five staff, and you will be there. You'll pay yourself a minimum of one forty-four. I know with a seven twenty, I've been really generous here. You see where I've got that in red, that two eighty-eight in red. That really doesn't go up. It's not forty percent at all. Because as you get another staff member, most of your bills don't go up. But I want to be consistent, just to say, you know, if you're one hundred fifty thousand close to it, you'll need to get five staff members, and and you have a turnover of seven twenty. But I know people that are paying themselves a lot more than that with less turnover. So that isn't too much. I'm going to tell you about systems and being consistent now. Now, McDonald's, if they wanted to, they could actually put a salon, a, a, a restaurant on the moon if they wanted to. They get 15-year-olds who can't make their bed, go to their restaurants and make coffee just perfect every time. Now, we all know McDonald's is rubbish. We all know that it's bad for our health. It's, it's really rubbish. But you know what? It's the most successful restaurant in the world. It really is the most successful restaurant in the world because when you go in there, you don't, you're not in for a shock, guys. You know how clean the toilets are going to be. Oh, I'm saying five stylists, Marina, as in earning stylists. If you want juniors as well, that's okay. I'm talking earning people, productive people in the salon. I, I would have them sort of figures in my salon with four staff members, me and one junior. That's what I would, I would get, and I'd hit them figures pretty easy. You see... I want to tell you a story about this chicken salad that was down the road. This new restaurant opened up and it had a chicken salad uh, poster in the window saying the best chicken salad in the world. Well, you know what? I went down and proved them. I thought, I'm going to go and have one of these no matter what. Awesome. Thanks. Okay, Marina. And I sent my junior down on a Thursday and I had that chicken um, salad and it was the best chicken salad in the world. OMG, it was the best. Now that, when you tell someone you're the best and you deliver you can't stop word of mouth. I told every client, every client I did, literally for a whole week, I told them how good that was. Now, next Thursday, I could not wait again to get that chicken salad. Now, I sent my junior down again, and believe it or not, when it came back, it was not the same, and I was not happy. It was better than before. It was the best chicken salad in the universe. The universe, like that's what it was. It was the best in the universe. I had died and gone to heaven. I didn't think they could get better, but they did. Now, I told everybody again for a week, everybody, how fantastic they were and how they were better than they were the time before. 
Now, on the third week, we went down again and we had the chicken salad. And do you know what? Like, seriously, it was awful. And it wasn't bad. It was just back down to the original one. It was still the best in the world. But the problem is, I now knew they could deliver something better and I felt cheated. And that is really deep down how you grow your salon or how you don't grow your salon if you're not consistent. Now, I did say earlier on, people actually like to feel at home. They like to feel like when they come to your salon, they know what to expect and they get it every single time. So that's why you have to have systems in place. That's why your salon needs to run exactly the same whether you're there or not on a Monday afternoon, a Saturday and a Friday, Thursday night. It has to be the same. Years ago, we used to set systems up this way. Lead a follower. We used to say to our staff, this is how you do it in my salon and this is how I want it done. That is back back in the year 2000. That will not work in 2017. If you have problems losing staff, if you have problems in general with staff, you need to change the way that you're actually leading your team. Like the stats are 40% of your staff will leave you. That's almost half your staff. If any of you guys had a mass walkout yet, if you guys had like one staff member and three all leave and they all hate you at the end of it, have you guys had that? Because that's awful when it happens. It really is hurtful. You give them the love, you know, you give them everything you can and they leave. And do you know what? Deep down, most of the time when they leave, it's down to you. You should have nipped something. Yeah, you should have nipped something into the bud three or four months ago when you had the chance. And the problem is we didn't. We let it go. We thought it would sort itself out. But really when it comes down to it, truthfully, your staff are expecting something different. Like you offer, you know, a job. <laughs> they want a career. Karen, you're very, very blessed. But you know what? I wouldn't bet with you that you're never going to have it. I wouldn't do that because the fact is, is the world has changed. And I'll talk a little bit about it. I'm going to show you this picture here. This, this is a picture of four. Uh, my mom, mom is ill, was in the UK, took my client out, I was struggling there to keep. Do you know what, Amanda? It, 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 it's regardless of the excuse or not, it happens and it happens to every people. I was in Australia when I had that happen to me uh, with my son in the UK. It's dreadful. It really is. They do not care. It's awful. Um, yeah, thank you, Marina. Thank you for that. But yeah, it is it's better through that. Um, yeah, do you know, in home salons, it's irrelevant where they go. Um, but but the difference is, is in 2017, we as owners need to be better leaders. Now, I'm going to tell you a story about these four people. These are four people that all want to have a, all due to be 21 this week, all of them. And they could have four individual parties, but they want to have the best party in town. They want everyone to talk about this party for the next 10 years. That's what they want. So what they do is that they all come together and they all decide. They've all got different food requirements. They've all got different music tastes. They all dress differently when they go out to their party. In, but they all compromise because it's for the good of the party. Now, the girl on the right, the one whose cardigans fell off her shoulder here, it's her house. So she sets the rules. And they understand it's her house. And you have to abide by certain rules. But everybody gets a decision. Everybody gets a say. That is how it is in 2017. Your team need to feel that that salon that they're working in is not yours. It's theirs. It's a team effort. And that's the way it has to be. So when you build your systems now, it has to be built with your team. It can't be built by you and then direct it to the team. You come together. Most people, if they help you build, it's their system. And if it's their system, they won't break it like you. You hold a system, you won't break it. So you've got to build it with your team. That's how it is. This is basic stuff, guys. It's back, back, back to basics. It's right the way back to where we started from. Right the way back as in good old-fashioned customer service. And it has to be that way. Here's a few people that hopefully they're on the, on the call today. They're with me. We grabbed a call with me, like Catherine grabbed a call with Nicole, Christy grabbed a call with me, we had a quick chat with her about her salons, and we turned it around really quite quickly with people like that. We don't have magic wands, we talk about being accountable, we talk about really keeping you focused, and that's the key here. Jumping on a call with me, and it was just a call, started the ball rolling for them, and that's what they did. Six salon musts in 2017. This is minimum stuff, guys. You need a written weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annual goals. Everybody in your salon needs to know where they stand, what's expected of them. This is a must. 
You need to have written salon goals for individual stuff. So your team, on a Saturday, my team would go to me, oh, we just did 15,000 this week, we're just a little bit short, or high five, we did 17,000 this week. They knew their numbers, they knew my numbers. You have to have that. Remember we said, it's their salon, they want to feel part of something bigger here. They need to feel this. In 2017, if you don't get them to feel part of you, they will leave you. They don't want to go home and work from the home salon. They actually want the same freedom that you guys have got. Weekly team meetings, guys. If you're going to try and systemize your salon and get your team on board, you've got to keep them in check. Remember, I'll say it once more. We are paid to repeat ourselves. Remember, when you repeat yourselves to your team, we are paid to repeat ourselves. You need to know your personal and business break-even figure, and that includes your wage. Bung your wage in and then know your break-even figure, and that is your first goal. And you need to check on this weekly and monthly that you are on track. Put some milestones in place, guys. You need a marketing plan. The person who does not have a marketing plan is just winging it all the way. You need to know what turns on your clients, and then you can turn that tap on and off whenever you feel like it. If you've got two staff now, and I said to you, I'll give you a 1,000 clients, all you've got to do is find staff. You would find staff. You know, that's just what we do. You've got to make sure that you know how to get clients in, because then you can breed your own. And as they start working their way up, you can give them clients. There's nothing worse than breeding your own than you've got bitsiness going on. And again, you need a great team, people who actually believe in you. They believe in you. So the question for you guys is going to pop up now on a question. You saw them six. I want to know how many is missing in your salon. How many of these six do you feel you do not have? And these are the six that is one of the reasons that you, maybe you're not as successful as you would like to be. Which, you know, how many have you got? So are you missing one? Are you missing two? Are you missing all six? It doesn't matter how many you're missing. This is all about you, this seminar, guys, not about me. It's about you standing to yourself and going, actually, I know I'm missing four of these. I'm lazy. I know I'm missing three of these because I haven't got time. It doesn't matter. This is where you hold yourself accountable to you. You know, the only person who's going to turn your son around is you. Kim, you're missing three. Yeah, know which three you're missing, Kim, and work on it. Work on them three. It's really imperative that you actually know what you're short on because that six is the minimum of 2017 how to run a business. Marina, two has to be. If you wanted to start getting that consistency, you've got to put them into place. It just has to happen. The salons uh, that have got them all in place are doing well. It really, really are. Yeah, marketing plan. Um, if you jumped in, Amanda, earlier on, it's all about your core story. It is. You need to know what turns on your clients. And you know that. I'm going to give you a real hint now. When you sit there with a consultation, when you say to that client, why did you come to me? And they tell you why they left a the salon. That is what you're going to use in your marketing. When you do a consultation over and over again and they say, I hate yellow hair, that's what you're going to talk about in your marketing. When you get a client come in and she talks about her frizzy hair, that's what you're going to talk about in your marketing because that's what annoys people and they want it fixed. People only buy for two reasons. They buy to get rid of pain and they get pleasure. Well, I don't think you go to a hairdresser's really, a new hairdresser's for pleasure. You go there because you've got a pain, you've got a problem and something's really annoying you and you go there hoping that someone fixes it. So what do you stand for, Amanda? What are you known for? If I was in your town and I Googled 10 salons, why would you stand out? And you've got to stand out to the people that you're good at and who you want. That's what your core story is all about. So how to market your salon? It's that. It's simple stuff. You do it every day at work, guys. You fix people's problems. The problem is you just don't know what to do with that answer. You save it and you build color specialists. Then you, every advert you do, you need to talk about the pains of a color specialist. Like what, what do you see? What do people come, on, come in with? You know, what colors do they have that they hate? How do you fix it? Tell me your story. I need to fall in love with you, Amanda. And if you're just the same as everybody else, I'm not going to come to you. I need to know that you're a color specialist, which means you've got to teach me that you are. And that's what you tend to do. The cause of break even was a missing. Yeah. Hey, um, we fix clients' condition. Do you, know, do you know, Amanda, really, it's basic stuff. It really is. The, the fact is we get stuck with so much fluff and junk, we forget. 
We sit there every day of our lives and we do a consultation with someone and we know what pisses people off. Am I allowed to say that on Facebook? I don't think I am. We know what annoys people. We really do. And you know what? That's what we need. So I know people that want to do the consultation form. They go away and they write it down. And the, it's called a news story. And they write it down of every single pain point that someone's had has been in the salon. And then their post that they do is maybe the problem. And if I've got that problem, Amanda, I'm going to see your post and go, crap, Amanda can fix my problem. She gets me. She really gets me. That is how we do it. And that's how you build your core story. That's how you grow your salon. But it won't happen overnight, but you've got to start building that. That's what you need to do. Um, the average salon loses 20% of its clients. Your back end guys, all your clients, 20%, they, they, they will leave. You know, you can stop this down to 10%, but you can't stop 10% because they die or move away. But you know what? This is simple stuff. It's about setting up emails. It's about setting up texts. It's about calling your clients like we used to years ago and say, are you happy? <laughs> hey, Narelle, don't have enough ego to be noisy. I'm the biggest introvert, believe it or not. But the fact is, when I believe in myself and I believe that I can fix your problem, I was shouting from the rooftops. If I met you in a bar, Narelle, you wouldn't even know who I was. I'd be quiet. I probably wouldn't even say hello to you. Um, yeah, I used to. This is a fact, Narelle. I used to meet my staff who'd worked for me for seven years, and I bumped them into a restaurant, and I didn't even say hello to them. I hid from them. I, I'm just the biggest introvert you can imagine. But you know what? It's It's about... I can fix your problem, and, and like you got to imagine Narelle, where you are. I don't I don't know exactly where you are, like uh, exactly where the salons are, but indirectly, people are paying good money to go and get more crap done to their hair. If you're good at what you do and you know you can fix it, you got to tell them you can fix it, and then they believe you, and then you got to you got to follow it through. Of course, you got to be good enough to do it when they come in, but that's how it starts. It really, it really isn't about ego. I used to think, I used to be like, you thinking, oh, I can't tell people how good I am. And I can't. I never, ever say I'm fantastic or brilliant. What I say is I can help you with that problem because that I know I can. I'm really deep down. Like, when we talk about this, can you imagine if you talked about this, like Amanda, you actually talked in your, every advert that you put out, every single advert that you put out, think about this. I think you'd be rocking it. If you put out, if you talk to me nonstop every single day about you get me, you get the fact that people have crap colour, you you get the fact that people you know take the Mickey out of people and they charge them a fortune for balayage that looks junk or the hair's breaking off and no one cares. Do you know what? I think your salon will be rocking now. I think it will because if you if you spoke to me every single day, I mean in Instagram for example, they reckon you should put 30 posts out a day. If you put 30 posts out a day talking about that. Uh, Nadine, I don't know you. It's strange, isn't it? But I've lived your life. I have. And and I have lived your life. I've been there. And, and you know what? All you guys are the same. This is one thing. I want, you to, I want you to see this one, guys. Right? This is why. This is why we're having this conversation. This is why that you might be struggling. This is why it is. And you can't blame this, but you all do. You all blame. I don't have, I don't have time. Do you know what? You do have time. You know, I know there's people on this, I've seen them on this on this talk as we speak now, that are rocking it and making money and killing it, and they have exactly the amount of time as everybody else that's here. It's a fact. I have the same amount of time a day as you. Richard Branson has the same amount of time a day as me. David Beckham has the same amount of time as me. Kim Kardashian has the same amount of time as you. Every salon I know, some salon owners are making 300000 a year in their pocket. Some are making half a million in their pocket. Some are making 100,000 in the pocket. We all have the same. The difference is you don't know which direction to take. That's as simple as that. You just get stuck in that fluff that we talk about. It's simple as that. Hey, Sammy, there you go. You're on here. Dad is on here as well. Hey, some reviews that the people have given us, which is really quite good. Salon problems. Hey, salon problems through here. Um, I believe this is what happens to us. This is why we come up with excuses about why we don't do what we do because this is real we have staff resistance we, we come to work like today you might be all pumped you go to work and the staff go don't want to do it like that you know it's just we have staff resistance we have low low cash we have few staff not enough staff to grow we have low or no growth it's hard to get that momentum going we have we don't have any new clients we've just stuck with the same old crap you know you're working too much in the salon. They're doing nothing to get working on. By the way, working on guys is attracting clients, teaching your staff the journey, You know, spending that valuable time growing the salon team. It's not just about numbers here. 
your pre-books are low, you know, you don't even work on your rebooks. you have low retention, you don't keep people when they come because you just talk negative, miserable stuff when you're in there, you don't have any time off. I'll tell you about one thing, one thing I've learned, by the way, and it really helped me, my wife did this because she, she, um, do you know what, do you know what, it's, it's, it's crazy, it so is. I'll tell you one thing that helped me out a lot, guys, a little clue here, my wife forced me to do this because I would work, right, thinking if I just kept working and working and working, I would make more money. This was when I was in the UK, my first five years. It didn't work out. My wife made sure that I didn't work eight weeks in a row without taking a break. When I finished doing eight weeks, we took a weekend somewhere and I had to get out. And I tell you what, having time off doesn't off lift you up. It makes you feel really good and it makes you come back pumped. I forgot how drained I was. And yeah, exactly, Marina, getting burnt out. It's so true. And then you lose the passion. It's, it's just so easy, guys. Now, staff resistance. I'm going to tell you something that I did. It's something that I learned really early on. I, I, I do this at the interview stage. It's my way or the highway. Even though we build systems together, even though we build our salon, it's still my final call. Remember that girl? It's her birthday. She has to set the rules. There has to be guidelines, even though we build it together. Well, you, you know, when I draw a line in the sand and I say to people, this is how it is. If you don't want it, you know what? It's simple. Go down the road and work or go home. I don't care what you do. If you have low cash, set your budgets. The amount of salons I see that don't make any money because they're, they're, they've got too many staff, lose some staff, guys. Get the ones you've got being full and then employ more. If you have few staff, if you haven't got enough staff, you're going to have to spend some time working on how to get staff. Now, that means like, oh, there's none out there. There's definitely people out there because they're moving around. It means that your advert or your story or whatever you're doing is crap. Work on it, guys. Okay, low or no growth. You need some weekly targets, weekly meetings, Weekly targets, that's how you tend to do that. Let's have a look. You working too much in it, yeah. Breathe, guys, breathe. I'm going to tell you what I do as a coach. This is really, really the simplest form of what a coach does. You guys, when you say you're putting fires out all day, what's actually happened is you're sitting there right in the middle of this big, fat storm. Okay, that's what you're doing. You're sitting there in this big, fat storm, and you don't know how to get out of it. Now, a coach is on the outside of the storm, and we're going to you, hey, if you walk three, walk three steps forward, turn left, five steps forward, turn right, two steps, you're out. That's what we do. We get to see it from the outside because we breathe. We get to see it. You, you get caught up so much with all the spinning of the plates and the juggling of the balls that what tends to happen is you just go around in circles. Oh, I'll try five forward. Oh, it's not working. I'll try five to the left. Oh, it's not working. And you're sitting in this storm continually. So that's what you need. You need to breathe, guys. Do you know what I, I really say? The best thing to do with you guys, if you feel like it's, you're feeling overpowered, take a day off, take all your books with you and sit there and look through your numbers in a whole day. It'll be worth so much money to you. Low pre-books, track your numbers, guys. The amount of people that don't even track their numbers is crazy. Do you know what, Sam, emotionally, I totally, totally agree. It is. But you know what, Sam, if I took you away for a weekend for three three days somewhere and, um, yeah, and you sat there and looked at your books and looked at your staff, you'd be really zoned in when you get back to know what's going on and where you need to get to and how you need to move. It's amazing. Once you're in there, it's like, oh, she's getting married. Bless her. That's why her rebooks are down. It's just crap. Um, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Because I thought you said incested. I'm thinking, oh, I might not mention that one. I've already made one mistake so far. Um, invested. Yeah, I totally, totally agree. I did get what you mean, Sam, at the end of that. Yeah. No time off. Get your systems in place, guys. If you're burnt out, get your systems in place, guys. And if you're losing passion, you get your systems in place. Your salon will run without you. It really will. Okay. I'm going to show you now a really quick way you can do this on your own, how to catapult your money. It, it's, it's a um, compound effect, um, the triology we call it. Uh, um, so you just need to figure out. You can write this down and do it yourself if you want to, guys. You don't have to share this with, with us if you don't need to. That's, that's okay. You need to know your average ticket. So how much does the average client bring in so if you don't know this it's just like how many clients i do this week money wise divided by how many people walk through the door yep easy that'll give you your average ticket what's your average visit period now this is simple it's like how many people visited my salon visited is the key here how many people visited my salon let's go in a year 
how many clients, individual clients, came in in that year. And if you divide the two together, you will know how often a client comes back. It's as simple as that. And how many clients do you have? How many clients? Okay, 90%. How many clients? Okay, cool. Now, this will give you something really simple. I want to show you some simple facts here, very basic. So if you had 1,000 clients and you increased by 10%, how much you would get? If you increased it by 15%, how much you would get? Really simple. So if you just do a 10% increase, guys, your half a million salon would be worth 165,000. If you had a 15% increase, you would take 760,000. Now that is almost half a gain. That's by a very 15%, not a 50%, a 15%. But you work on 15%, which means if you do like you know, 1,000 clients, you get 1,100. If you have an average ticket of 100, it's going to be 110. If your visits are five a year, you get them in just a 0.5 more. Really simple. Three ways to grow your business. It's the only three ways to grow your business. It really is. There's only three ways, and that's it. Everyone thinks it's, it's more, it's harder. It actually is not harder at all. It really is quite simple. I got shown this a while ago by somebody. It's a real fact, and it took me five years to get this. Successful people value time more than money, and struggling people value money more than time. Like, it's really quite simple. It took me five years to realize, five years of trying to be cheap, five years of doing it myself, five years of trying hard, that I can't get back. That's five years I miss with my kids, guys. It's five years that I miss with my family, trying to do it myself, where really, way back then, yeah, so five years way back then, that I couldn't do anything with that. I, I found it really quite hard. Are you still with me, guys? You still there? Awesome. You still here, guys? You still here? Let's see. Okay, cool. So this took me five years, this did. Five years. Uh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. My phone went. That's all. Um, okay. So five years of wasting my time completely. Trying to figure out what was going on here. And, and I don't know why I'll do that because deep down, I think it's really quite easy. It really is quite easy to do that. It really is. I personally believe the system's broken. I believe that we're, a, we're working with a, a model that's really old now. We know it's broken. We have the biggest staff shortages ever. Like, I don't know about you, but everyone out there is struggling to find staff. That's what they're trying to do. So, for me, it's actually... Um, there has to be a reason. We have to fix it. I believe that my salon um, did well. My salon did well for a reason. These systems work in every other salon that we train. The average salon, like I said, has a staff turnover of 40%. We know that. We know staff are leaving. We live in evolving times. Your staff member that works for you now, we have computers that are on our wrist. Some of you guys now sitting here watching me, I am in Australia, you guys are around the world, you're probably watching on, watching on a little phone in your bedroom. We live in evolving times. Your staff have evolved. We, it's the old, old, old way of doing things do not work. They just don't do that. It's as simple. Cool. So for me, Hopefully, through this and hopefully through our interaction, guys, hopefully you can rewatch this and you can find a way out of where you are. That's what I'm hoping that's going to happen. Um, yeah, I, I totally agree with you there, Kim. You know, but if you're sick of fighting, if you're completely over it, the one thing that I applaud you not to do, and I'm going to tell you why I see this all the time, please don't do this. 
um, is that knowledge versus implementation is massive. Um, it's huge. This is massive, guys. And I'll tell you what the difference is. We all have knowledge. You can Google lots and lots of things. You can Google everything. I've just showed you how to get clients through your door. I've just taught you, hey, Christy, how are you? I've just taught you how to do things. Now, that's knowledge I've given you. Now, you, some people, if you're like me, it means nothing. Some people can go to the gym and they can work out on their own, self-motivated, and they will do well. But 95% of us will do nothing. We know we need to eat better and exercise more, but we just can't be bothered. We just don't do it. We're not accountable to ourselves. But please, guys, do not do this because I know people on Facebook. You put these questions on Facebook like, my staff member was late today. What would you do? And you get these people whose salons are doing rubbish. They're not even making money. Give you advice. So please, the knowledge that you can pick up, you need to make sure the knowledge is good. What you really want to pay for, what you really want to really more than anything be accountable to is implementation. Implementation means doing, doing it. You know, I can teach you anything you like, but you've got to actually do something with it or it doesn't work. The salon owners I know that do well is because they do something with the information. Knowledge is nothing. If you do not know what you need to learn, you need to ask, you need to do something. You can't just wing it anymore. Otherwise, you'll be on that roller coaster. You'll always be up and down. You'll never get yourself to that next stage. It needs to be done. It needs to be done. It's as simple as that. The one thing that I found really quite hard with this, guys, is I kicked myself for ages because I thought it was my fault. I did. I thought it was my problem. But the thing was, it's not my problem. It's not your fault either. You see, the thing is, we've never been taught it. I tell you, you come into my salon, I'll cut your hair good. You know, I can give you some body. I know what to do. You know, you'll leave looking like a princess. I guarantee it. I don't care if you come in looking like a troll. I'm going to send you looking out beautiful because that's my job. But then I realized that when I was a salon owner, I had a different job. My job was to look after my team. My job was to grow my team, to get my team to get paid good money, to get my team to hit their dreams. And for me, like for me to hit my dreams. So I had to learn. We have to learn. It's not your fault. No one's taught you. You didn't learn this at TAFE. You didn't learn this at hair school. You didn't learn it anywhere. Do I have the, the big pill that'll make you do it? Do I have the magic wand? Ah, uh -uh, I do not. I offer you, I offer you hard work. That's what I offer you, hard work. You see, doing this is really hard because you've got to do two things at once. But the one thing that I believe is you do it once and do it well, which means you're going to work hard for a year and then your business will be turned around. But the thing is, is that Aren't you working hard anyway? But now you're working hard differently. You're working hard but not getting anywhere. I'm happy to work hard. I totally agree. Do you know what? Most people actually hate maths. No, Al, they hate it. But you're going to have to work hard, guys. If you want to get out of this, there's only one way for you to make successful, and you've got to fight. No one's going to give it you, and you're going to lose, and you're going to get smashed up, and you're going to get beat around the bush, but it's just going to happen. Like we've done this over and over again with guys. We've done this. We have people on the course that's actually done this with us. You know, they come to us and they, you know, we can turn them around within weeks. But we don't have a magic wand to do this in weeks. We do not have it. What we do have is we have clarity. We have help. We hold your hand. We hold you accountable. And we'll kick you at the bum when you need to be done as well. And keeping that focus is what makes a huge difference. Now, I did say this earlier on, guys, you have to work on your business, no matter how much you say you don't want to do it and you don't have time. The minimum you can offer is one hour a week. It's the minimum you need to put in. I would say cross that one hour. Do not let anyone, no matter what happens, even your best client, Mona, doesn't make any difference to me. You go, you leave your salon, you go to a coffee shop and spend that hour looking at your numbers. How can you get clients in? How can you train your team better? What's happening in your salon now? We need to know what's happening. I promise you from, from as much as I can in my heart, I promise you that if you start changing things in your salon, your team will respect you, not the other way around. You see, your team need systems. Your team need a leader. They need to know they're there because they belong. 
They want to be part of a bigger journey. They don't want a job anymore. If you're offering a job, you'll never get anybody. Who wants a job? People want to belong. People want to belong to a team. They want to grow. They want to sit in a coffee shop and go, I work at Marina's. I work at Louisa's. I work at Koto. That's what they want to say. And they want people to go, no, you don't work there. That is an awesome place. You see, that's what they want. You know, if you was a computer system, they'd want to work at Apple. You know, they want to be at the place. You know, it's simple as that. Um, how do you keep staff motivated with small teams such as when I was booked out and they don't have clients? Amanda, you know what? It's all to do with your weekly team meetings. They need to know your big dream and it works that way. Um, you're going to be booked out with your clients no matter what, but you also need to know, Amanda, how do I get fresh clients to the salon? You are not going to grow. You're not going to grow. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know what? Sam, Sam is is being Sam's killing it up there. She's she's really good. She's a, but you know what? Sam's a hard worker. She works really hard on a business. She's been with us now for about sixteen months. She's been part of our group. She works bloody hard. Sam does it. Doesn't it doesn't happen? You know, I, I speak to her on a day off and she's working hard. Like you've got to put the hard yards in, Amanda. I'm sorry that hard yards have to go and in the right direction. I'm not saying you're not working hard, but in the right direction. It's as simple as that. Sam is awesome. Yeah, and you want a cash cow, it comes. It really does come. Like the cash, it will come. But you've got to get clients and you've got to be able to get staff and you've got to be able to keep the staff and keep the clients. The one thing I found really quite hard, guys, when we talked about which salon owner do you want to be? Do you want to be the war zone or do you want the lifestyle or the million plus? Like really, you've got to dream bigger. You've got to think big. Otherwise, it doesn't happen. You've got to think and dream big. And then, you know, act big. If you act like a big salon, you'll become a big salon. It doesn't just happen overnight. It really doesn't. Once you get yourself to that lifestyle salon, guys, really, truthfully, once you get to that lifestyle salon, it's, it's safe. It's a safe place to be. You get to really relax. And you actually get to feel that you can breathe. You can lose a staff member. It won't dent you. You know, you can lose some clients and it won't dent you. It's it's that place. Like Amanda, most of the time when, when you're at work now, I am sure you're just putting fires out. You Like you say, you're struggling to stay afloat. These are hard things. These are, this is crap in your head that you don't need. You know, and you'd, you'd think differently if that weren't in there. You know, if you had a million dollars in the bank, you wouldn't go through that crap. It's so hard. It's tough. You know, life is like that. I'm with you, Amanda. I feel your pain. I really do. I, I say, I've been there myself many, many years ago when I decided to draw a line in the sand and I went, you know what? I'm going to be unemployed in Australia if it doesn't work. I'm sticking to my guns and I'd rather be unemployed. I'd rather close it down and that's it. But that was what we did. And you'll be so more relaxed. So we have other people again, uh, results through here. Um, I can, I can show you testimonials of, of lots of my clients. Um, you'll find them on, on the Facebook and on the internet quite easily. You know, we, we do this for a living. We've been doing it for a while now. We do really, uh, we don't have a problem with, with um, good on you. Do you know what, Amanda? It, it's, 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 um, it's, it's heart wrenching. It really is heart wrenching. Seriously, it's like because we we have our staff members. We treat them like our children. We give them the love. We do everything for them. And most of the time, they'll just you know what they'll just rip your heart out. But but the thing is, is that they're not everyone's like that. They're not. But you just need to realize that you know, you got to draw a line in the sand. And for me, it's like. You know, this is the only way I can do it. And if it crashes and burns, I'm going to die on my watch. I don't want to do someone else's. And it really works. I mean, there's plenty of people out there that can help you do this. You will be the employer of choice. If you have systems in place and you build a we team, you know, like the team, it's a team salon. You're doing it for the team and for the clients. I'd want to work for you. I tell you that for nothing. You know, I know how Sam runs her salon. If I ever went to Queensland, I would work for Sam because she's like me. It's all about the love of the client, nothing else. It's not about the how great am I, Sam. It's about I want my client to be given love and love alone. That's what I care about. Yeah, when I when I interview my team, 
you know, can you smile for five hours a day? Can you can you actually you know be happy with people you work with? That's what um, I am. Oh, Naral, good on you, Naral, good on you. Um, it's true. Do you know what? It's tough in business. I don't care who you are. I've got salons that do a million dollars and they find it really hard. The salons that are doing a hundred thousand and find it really hard. It's tough in business. And when you're in that bottom one, that zero to two hundred thousand market, if that's where you are, Amanda, at the moment, it's a bloody hard place to get out of. Um, yeah, like really, like really is hard. But you know what? Seriously, deep down. Nobody, uh, and, and Narelle, it's a beautiful thing, you know, you want a shoulder to cry on, but Amanda, I'm not that shoulder, right? I'm not. I'm a kick up the ass guy. So if you want to get yourself out of here, you're going to have to work yourself out of here. Start being smart. Um, it needs to happen. Foundations. Once your foundations are strong, nothing can stop you. It can't. It takes forever. Again, we can show you lots of people here um, that have joined us and they've had the same results. Um, I hate send, showing testimonials, but but... That's just the way it is. Um, now, your team want to belong to something bigger. They do. Uh, I think I've been signed my TV on the floor two days and the rest of the time has. Do you know what? I think that's fantastic, Christy. I do. I think you should do. I, I um, <laughs> yeah. Um, the thing is, is that um, people um, like want to get off the floor. I never had that urge ever. I wanted to still do hair. I loved it. So I worked two days a week with all my best clients. All the crap went to everybody else. And I and I did that. I didn't train my team because I got, I got someone else to train my team because I, I didn't want to do that. And I spent four days doing nothing. And that's how I ended up going into coaching. Um, Narelle, thank you. Thank you so much. Now, this belonging thing, like you can feel it now in the group, like Narelle and Chrissy, everyone's talking like, your staff want to belong to your salon. They want to belong to something bigger. And in 2017, the world we're living in, as a salon owner, it's bloody lonely. And we want to belong. Like That's why we started group coaching. That's why we, we, we coach in a group. People want to belong to something bigger than themselves. They want to feel part of something, a movement. That's what's there at the moment. It's a movement. Um, I totally agree. It's, it's what's going on. We all need to belong. That's why we did that. When you do this, like this is where you need to be, guys. You need to take time off. You know, I think to a stage now in my my life, I want to actually only work six months a year and six months off. That's what I'm going to aim for. But as a salon owner, I know what you guys do. Right? And this guy told me off many, many years ago. You get your appointment book now for next year, 2018, right? And you book your holidays first. Book four weeks and don't don't stop because that's what you deserve no matter where you are. And you'll make it happen. Take some real time off, guys. How do I quickly get these results? Now, we have this whole talk has been about two things. One, educate you and get you to do it. Simple as that. That's what I want you to do. I want you to, to educate and go out there and start doing something. I don't care what it is, but you now know, hopefully, when we asked you some a lot of interact questions, you know where you need to be. You know what you need to do, where you need to aim. You need to attract some clients, keep some clients, grow your team, and then you'll have the profit. Now, some of you at this stage, as you know, we're closing our, our mastermind salons. We are closing down next week. We've got you one more week because of my webinar crashed. The thing is, is that some of you guys will not do it on your own. You just won't do it. And if you need help, that's what we're here for. It's as simple as that. If you want, if you don't want to do it on your own, you know, we have no magic beans. I'm going to tell you now, you're going to work hard. You really are. It isn't for everybody. We'll give you what you need to literally get you through the door. Like I said, it's the last time we're closing the door for the mastermind for a reason. And I'll tell you why we're closing it down was that I'm in the middle now of writing a whole new course, kicking out the fluff and catapulting some. I'm going to get really crude here, guys. I'm going to give my people that are working for me, like my team, the, the people that are in my group. I just think I just think deep down and I've been working on this for a year now. OK, yeah, I'm going to work on this for a year. You guys need money. So what I'm trying to do is break this down to something really simple. I'm going to teach you how to attract as many clients as you can. I'm going to treat, teach you how to keep as many clients as you can. And I'm going to teach you how to look after your money so you get at least 100000 a year, 200000 a year. My aim is to catapult all this. That's that's what we're trying to do here. Like, So our aim is, uh, hi, Elaine, hi. My aim is 
is to really singly focus on, you know what, we need to get that money in the till before we can do this. We need to be able to get clients kept and lose the holes and stop leaking people. We need to get money, real profit in your bank account. And I'm talking, I remember years ago when we had a salon, we kept 5% of our money for a refit. Do you really keep 5% in your bank account for a refit every five years? No one does. We can't afford it anymore. So that's why we're narrowing down. So the people who are going to join us in the system will have two. They'll have the iSalon Mastermind and they'll have this new course that's coming out now. I'm going to run through really quickly here because we did this last time. This is what's in the modules now. We've got the VIP policy, how to hold team meetings, how to get your time under control. We've got how to be a good leader, how to benchmark your salon, how to put job roles for your team, how to set the best KPIs. How to build momentum till you actually start getting the 67% of advertising. Do you remember that 67%? Um, do you remember that? Our questionnaires, good. Um, looking at a client form. Questionnaires for what, Amanda? Let me know what the questionnaires are for that. Okay. We have um, performance reviews. How to hold your team, you know, really appraisals. How to hold them down, Pat. How to get employee pay structure all the way done. How to set a bonus scheme up. You know, how the trilogy, which is how to keep the clients and again, you know, put that all into place to be actually who you're going to be. One on one, my new one on one coaching. You guys, if you're not in with me, it's going to be huge, but different. It's coming. Um, a group. This is what we charge for our group. It's three hundred and ninety seven a month. That is it. That's what we charge. Three ninety seven. We are as from. A feedback form, I'm going to find this. Uh, looking at a client form, can I find this? Um, yeah, cool, Marina. Yeah, not a problem. Um, our question is good. Looking at client form, feedback form. Do you know what, Amanda? I think if you've got a small salon and you really do have a small salon, I just call up your clients. Call up your best 30 clients in your, in your database and ask them what you want to ask them. You know, just ask them. Phone them up. To keep you consistent, your rebooks will know if you're consistent. Your clients, if you're losing clients, you'll know if you're consistent or not. Either way. This... This price, guys, by the way, the 397 will end next week. After next week, if you join us, it'll cost you $700 a month. That's it. That's the minimum it's going to get to get in with us because we want less people so we can work with more. I've already started setting up times for my group coaching people. My one-on-one -on -one people get access to it all. They get everything. And we will take on a lot less people. You'll also notice if you're in my group, guys, that we're starting to lose a few people. There's been a reason for that. We've been weaning a few people out because we don't. We want to have a real high impact with what's going on at the moment. So it's 397. Now, once it goes up to 700, you get 397 for life. It doesn't actually go up. It stays at that price no matter what. It's as simple as that. Now, I'm not here to sell you me or sell you anything else because that's not what I do and I don't want to work with everybody anymore. Hence why our group has decreased over the last week or two for a reason. You see, what we do is two things. It's as simple as this. We already have half of these gone from the last webinar that went. There is a button that I will send to you. I'll drop it in this group afterwards, guys. And all it'll give you, it costs you $100 and all it'll give you is just a call. That's it. A chat with me. I will get you on the call. I will spend 45 minutes with you. If I think that we're going to be a good fit, you're in. I'll take the $100 off the coaching fee. If I think we're not a good fit, I'll give you $100 back. So it costs you nothing. The $100 is one thing and one thing only. It's holding you accountable to say I'm ready. That's it. Nothing else. Um, Zero, nothing. I, I only taking 10. Then, like I say, the doors will be closed. I will reopen my group coaching on July. But you will notice once it comes through, it'll be $700 for my group coaching. That is it. There'll be no other way in. So it literally is almost double when it goes through because in July, my new course that comes out is going to be, I think, the best thing that anyone has ever seen in our world because it's all about getting you rich that's it nothing else just about you making you do well should you apply here's a question for you should you apply if you're tired of trying to motivate your staff then you should are you ready to get much greater results then you should do you want a team that loves to belong then you should do you want to make your salon a lifestyle salon remember to move you along then you should 
Do you want to fast track your sex and get results instead of two to five years later? Remember, do you want to invest in yourself to save time, to get these results quicker so you can spend more time with your family and so you can spend more time really where you should be, in that lifestyle zone? Do you qualify? I'm only taking 10. That's it. Only 10 guys. Five have gone. It's simple as that. Five have gone. You've got to be ready to stop wasting your time. You've got to be ready to start working on yourself. And you can see I made a mistake that I am dyslexic, as you didn't know if you knew that or not. My spelling is atrocious. You must be willing to take a risk on yourself and invest in your salon. This is an investment, guys. You, know, this is, you want a return on investment. You pay me money. It's an investment, and I will deliver the goods. That's the plan. I will make you more money. You must be willing to provide proof of your salon growth. I need to know that you're doing well, guys. That's how I work. As I said, the doors will close. 10 only. All you have to do is reach out to me. You message me, email me, whatever it is. I will give you a link and then you can book a time with me. We'll chat. If we're not going to be suited, you know what? That's okay. You'll get your $100 back. If we are suited, I'll take your $100 off the coaching. It's as simple as that. It'll cost you zero. If by any chance, if, if I find for any chance that we're not suited, I will push you in the right direction. I know coaches out there that may help you. It's as simple as that. Um, so the problem we have is, is that you can go ahead and do this yourself or I can help you. I don't care either way. Just go and make some money, guys. That's what we want. This isn't about me doing a, um, you know, a, a fest of like, oh, you must sign up. That's not what I do. I want to make sure that we're a good fit. I've purposely decreased the people in my group because I now want to build the biggest and the most profitable group out there. You guys are going to be doing rocking it and making so much money. And my job is to teach you how to do that and hold you accountable. So the question we have is um, a bit like the gym. You can do it yourself and I'll, I will help you as best I can. Or you can join us and make that movement if you need to. So um, I want to thank you for your time today, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure. An hour and a half, almost to six minutes, which is good. My timing is quite good. And it didn't crash and burn like it did last time, which is awesome. And I want to thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, for being interactive. Um, yeah, Elaine, it depends how small it is. It depends how small your sound is. If you message me, private message me, and I'll find out what, what level you're at, and I will have something for something else. Hey, Sam, I'll be due to talk on Monday. I'll be in Sydney with my laptop, so I'll be, I think, 10.30. We've locked it in. It'll be rocking down there, and yeah. You're going to be one of my guinea pigs, Sammy. We're going to catapult it. We're going to, we're going to like, don't take baby steps, guys. Let's jump right over that. Marina, good night. Good night. It's a shame you can't get to see me in the UK because you're, uh, you're busy. But that's okay because, again, UK is going to be quite small. We just picked 10 people for me to have a little, um, um, a little chat with. Um, cool. There we go. I uh, can't wait. I can't wait either, Sam. I've been holding it back for a while, thinking, when can I do it? I do want to get back from the UK. But, yeah, um, cool. Bring me the mill. Hey, sma not bring the mill. Smash the mill. Smash the mill. That's what I reckon. I think we should be aiming for, you know, 1.3, 1.4. Let's smash it. Let's just don't take a little baby step over it. Let's jump over it. All right, guys, thank you for your time. I'm going to log off. Um, I'm going to log off through here. I might just, um, let's see how we go through here. Can I do that? Oh, we might be able to do that. Am I, am I on? Am I on? Um, we shall see. I want to say goodbye to you properly, guys. Um, so we'll see if we're there. I'm going to try and say, hey, guys, um, are we here? We're, we're coming on. Hey. Uh, we are on. Woohoo! Okay, guys, thanks, guys. I'm going to hit ourselves off, and we're going to get ourselves out of here. Thank you.